What's up, Reef fam? Hope everybody's doing well, and thanks for joining me on another update for the 650 Peninsula. Sorry I've been MIA lately, just been busy with a few things outside, but I think it's about time to do a quick update since I got some new, uh, not just new fish in here, but a few new corals to show you guys. But before we uh, do the lap around, I just wanted to talk about a few things in regards to the Apex that I installed on the last uh, update. This thing, I got to say, even though I was fighting having to buy one and install it, it's already been a great tool. Uh, as soon as I put it in, got the pH probe in, and then realized, oh, my pH has been low for I don't know how long. Um, did a few tests and everything else. What it seems, what I think it is, is basically I have a little, much, more, a little too much CO2 within the house. Um, which is affecting the pH levels in the tank. Uh, the reason I know this is because whenever I open the windows, the pH tends to go up. And then, of course, when we get hot days and things like that, and I can't open the window, the pH starts uh, coming down. Uh, but it's still lower than I needed it to be. So what I ended up having to do, which what is going to be the install for this video, is buying a CO2 scrubber from from bulk reef supply that we'll be installing a little later hoping to see how that does um, how that fixes things and it'll help me figure out what the next step is going to be um, but the main thing is I need to get this pH up because currently it's hovering at a max of 7.5 which is way lower than I want it to be I, I prefer not to have it lower than 7, 9, 7, 8 uh, and that's nighttime uh, pH you know so during the day it should be hovering a lot higher than that so hopefully this resolves the issues but yeah you know, this was something I wasn't testing consistently um, spe especially since the tank has been running great I haven't I didn't really think I had a reason to test for it which was my bad well uh, the note to tell you is just once in a while do some tests and this thankfully this is a 24-hour monitor it sends me signals every time it's too low because it's been too low it's been sending me signals all day every day um, thankfully everything's good I had one power outage while uh, I've had the apex on and everything came back perfectly I didn't have to worry about anything and it's given me a lot more peace of mind especially when I'm out of town for uh, different trips and things like that so now that that's done, let's go make a trip around and uh, show you some of the new corals and new fish that are in here. Um, please note, the fish that are in here were sitting actually in quarantine for a little while, so they didn't go into the tank immediately. So key for a lot of uh, you reefers, make sure quarantine before you risk uh, valuable fish lives, basically. So let's make a trip around. All right, guys. Right in front of you are the two new fish that I got recently. Uh, this replacement clown to keep my other clown company and the other yellow tang that just ran off. Uh, the other yellow tang is a little bit bigger than the current tang I had in here. Uh, but everybody's been getting along very well thankfully and enjoying their new home. Um, that's pretty much it for the new fish I've gotten. But I have gotten a few new corals since the last update. Uh, one of which is this large bird's nest colony. Uh, we'll see how the colors change as it settles into this tank. It's very new. It's a very new uh, SPS coral that I put in here, so it's still uh, trying to get adjusted to the light and tank itself. Uh, let's get to the other side and show you the other SPSs that I got and the softies that I finally picked up. So the next SPS I uh, recently got was this Red Dragon. Uh, hopefully it'll get brighter in color and uh, it's going to look good in this spot as it grows and branches out. Which would probably be a while but uh, you know I got plenty of time so hopefully it settles in real well and just starts booming. Uh, the other one is this Red Planet which is currently... Uh, looking more green with a little bit of red, but as it grows, it's going to have a little more red and uh, the green's going to get a lot brighter. 
Uh, unfortunately, the camera is not picking up how bright it actually is, but that that's this is one of my favorite corals that I'm excited to grow out and uh, uh, have in this tank. Now, the, let's get on to the softies. This is one of the softies right here. Uh, still small pieces, but eventually will grow out and eventually will probably get transferred to my softies tank or maybe fragged and some will stay here, some will go to the softies tank that I want to set up. The next one is this guy right here. So another nice piece. Uh, I'm excited for it to grow and see how it branches out and what it ends up looking like. Another one I got is right here. Currently, since the lights just came on not too long ago, it's not fully opened up yet with the polyps, but it's gonna, the polyps are nice white tip polyps. Um, and as it grows, it's gonna be pretty nice to see how it expands. And finally, the last softie that is actually in this tank that I recently got is this toadstool right here with the green polyp tips. Um, it's definitely, it, it's interesting because it's not like my Tyree where it's a brighter green polyp. It's actually a lighter green and it looks pretty cool. Uh, so it, it should be... A little different, something different in this tank or in the softies tank. Now there are a couple other softies that are in the frag tank that I'll show you another day, but one of which is another slightly different shade uh, Cinellaria, that a green Cinellaria that I got, and a, another toadstool that's. It's actually the body is a little more green uh, than uh, normal, so. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put the, them in this tank for the time being. Uh, I might put a, I might transfer them in here soon and just keep them in here until I set up that soft tea tank for them. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for uh, my tank update. Now let's get to the CO2 scrubber project. So here are the things I got for the CO2 scrubber. I got the bulk reef supply reactor. And of course they sent some, uh, some tubing that will go to the skimmer uh, and some of the media from bulk resupply. Uh, hopefully this solves my pH problem. Uh, if not, it's definitely one of the issues. So I would like to see how far this raises the pH. Because right now I usually tend to top out at 7.51. Um, actually between 7.49 to 7.52 uh, during the day and then it drops down to 7.38 to 3.9 at night. So I would like to uh, raise it quite a bit more. Um, I'm hoping this takes care of the big chunk of it. Um, so we'll see. but. I'm going to go ahead and install this now and see what the current pH is uh, from the apex and uh, we'll check it again in a day or two and see if it's gone up and what's going on. But um, I'll keep you guys updated to see to let you know if uh, this solves the pH problem or if I need to if we go a different route and figure some other stuff out. But anyways, let's get started and put this thing together and get it on the tank. All right guys, so I got the line running uh, right into the skimmer. I uh, basically just unplugged the original skimmer line and plugged the one from the reactor in. And since there's not much room in here, um, I actually have it by where the controllers are. So they actually give you enough line for where I was able to run it up into that little gap and 
into where I have my controller. So I basically have it running down from this little gap into the reactor. This will make it easier to remove this reactor and change the media and put it back in. Um, so I, I'll just keep it here for now and we'll see how um, how it goes. I'm not, I, don't, I don't really want to drill into the stand and hang it anywhere. If I do anything it'd be like probably uh, use like um, the the velcro like high, high heavy duty velcro or something to stick it up further up top but for right now I'm just gonna keep it down here uh, and see uh, how this affects my pH if it raises it or what because um, if obviously if it doesn't do what I would like it to do which is raise the pH then it's useless and there's no need for me to keep it on this tank but for right now since we're testing it out trying to figure out you know the main cause of this low pH um, we'll keep it right here and just see what happens um, so let's see what the current pH of the tank is current pH is at 7.5 uh, I did do a water change just probably like 30 40 minutes ago on here but this is the approximate range it hits throughout the day um, as you can see, max I've probably hit uh, is 7.56 throughout, um, but hopefully this gets it up to a minimum uh, like level of 8.4 or so, um, just because I don't like it down this low, uh, but we'll see what happens. I gotta figure out what the main cause of this, and hopefully it's just this and uh, it takes care of this takes care of what I needed to take care of but don't worry I'll keep you guys updated on future updates and uh, hopefully this will resolve everything until next time thanks for watching and thanks for the support and I'll see you on the next update